So I'm in Japan, just doing Japan stuff. I don't care, let's go. But gradually I start noticing this one guy showing up over and over no matter where I go. Mario. For some reason, Mario, the guy from like the old timey computer game, everywhere I turned in Japan, this guy was popping up. It felt as though around every corner I would see something that made me think of Mario. And after about the 150th time this happens, a question dawns on me. Isn't that Mario movie about to come out? So I do a little bit of research, and what I discover is horrifying. It was coming out a full three weeks late in Japan. If I wanted to weigh in on this movie, I was going to have to wait nearly a month after everyone else had already seen it. And that's not to mention the fact that seeing it in Japan comes with a whole slew of other issues, among them the fact that I wouldn't be able to weigh in on Chris Pratt's controversial performance as Super Mario, listening to a dubbed version of it in a Japanese movie theater. So, out of options and desperate for some sort of resolution, I knew what I had to do. So I booked a ticket and got on a flight to the United States of America in search of answers. There's a, look at that. That's actually what I'm uh, about to go see tonight. I just got back from Japan like 12 hours ago and now I'm already on my way to see this Mario movie. Last year in October, I had a chance to uh, compete in a whistling competition. Whoa. In Japan in Kyoto. Can I, could you do a little whistling? Can I hear a little if, you, if you're comfortable um, or is yes. it? What did I whistle when I won? I, Cause I won a, a trophy. Oh, wait, where was that? I was in Pasadena, mm. and I did... You know that tone lock? Yeah, oh, throat? yeah, totally. Yeah. Oh my god, that's incredible. That's probably <laughs> better than the movie I'm gonna go see, to be honest with you. <laughs> Yay! Oh, lovely. <laughs> Great to meet you. You too. So here's my evaluation of the Super Mario Brothers movie that has just released. I've, I've watched the film and I think it's good, which is surprising to me. I think I've been pretty, not very secretive about the fact that I was feeling pretty cynical about it. I uploaded like a trailer reaction, I think, to the first Mario movie trailer. And I think you could characterize my response as feeling a little skeptical a little maybe cynical about the whole thing. And I think coming on the heels of like the Sonic movies, which I did not enjoy, Detective Pikachu, which largely I did not enjoy. I just had this really clear image in my head of based on that first trailer, this is gonna be a maybe visually really impressive movie with a handful of references, but then it would be, my, my fear was it would be so laden with that sub Pixar bad 
children's movie humor that I it would just be an unignorable issue for me. I really, Despicable Me is one of the only movies I've ever walked out of. I, I strongly detest the idea that children's movies have to be unfunny. That is not the case. There are a lot of really funny, effective, interesting stuff that's targeted at younger people that is also effective for an older audience. And I just really, I thought there was no shot this was gonna be good. I thought it was really very good though. They kind of had me pretty early on. I, I'm not gonna spoil anything in this. I just was really, here's the thing. I was really impressed by the degree to which the people who made this movie seemed to actually understand and care about the subject matter. I think the way that I've been like framing it in my head since I saw it is the Sonic the Hedgehog movie is what happens if Hollywood makes a Sonic movie and there's one guy in the room who like understands and likes Sonic and like kind of elbows a couple references or acknowledgements of, of what Sonic fans are looking for into it. But by and large, it's just a very cynical, kind of cra cash grabby take on, on the character. Whereas this Mario movie felt virtually everyone involved in the production from top to bottom like, really cared. A lot, of, I think a lot of them actually do care about and value Nintendo. And then even those who didn't cared about what they were doing. There was, there was stuff in there that I could not believe I was seeing. I'm not gonna spoil anything in the movie, but the opening scene, the degree of detail that they put into it, the amount of stuff that is like, pretty deep cut. This is not surface level Mario stuff. There's like weird, like edge casey Nintendo references in there that like 99.9% .9 of people aren't gonna get. And you can do that once or twice and it's like cute. They did it like a 150 times and to the point where like, I don't know, something about it felt earnest to me. I, I can't explain it. I know that like just doing references to the Mario stuff isn't and shouldn't be enough, <clears throat> but the stuff that we're referencing was really it just felt like every square inch of this, they had packed as much love for and affection for Nintendo and Mario as was humanly possible. From like characters' ringtones to every poster on the wall. Seeing seeing a character from Wrecking Crew in the opening 90 seconds, I was like, what is, what is happening here? Is this real? And here's the thing. There is virtually no plot. I, so a friend of mine mentioned as we were leaving that critics had really reacted negatively to this movie which I guess makes sense because it's almost not that much of a movie. There's very skeletal plot. It doesn't have anything to say at all um, <laughs> as a movie, but I'm so fine with that. Cause you know what else has like a skeletal plot that is barely there and is mostly meant to be ignored? Super Mario. Uh, and like Nintendo's games and like the Mario series, this movie to me, it is more concerned with having, with the audience having fun than it is about storytelling or uh, some like big swooping narrative or whatever. I, like, just think about how bad this movie could have been. If you look at the track record of other video game movies this decade, there's no Mario goes and hangs out with 15 human live action people. There's no coming up with some really off model weird enemy that is just here for the movie. It's they used the ingredients of Mario. I feel like a lot of this is a Miyamoto thing, by the way. They used the ingredients, like the core ingredients of Mario and made something that felt really like authentic. That was the other thing is like, I think a lot of my skepticism came from the, the Chris Pratt of it all and the humor shown in those first few trailers. But like the thing that the trailer can't show you is that this really feels like a Mario thing and like Nintendo had a major hand in making it, which makes sense they, they did. But it also, the thing that I wasn't expecting is how much the illumination side of it brought to the table, which is to say like, they made a, they used the strengths of Nintendo and the strengths of this powerhouse animation studio to make something that neither of them could have made on their own. Nintendo making like a Mario movie by themselves, it would have really lacked a lot of the like, fidelity and detail and careful, impressive animation. I just, and, and also just like, I was way less annoyed by it than I thought I was gonna be. There's like maybe two or three lines or jokes that like I thought were irritating, but that's like nothing compared to the numbers the Sonic movie was putting up. Mario doesn't like fart eight times in this movie. Like if that's the yardstick that we're measuring these by, which I think is a pretty solid example of why Sonic's movies haven't worked for me. It just isn't pandering in the way that I thought it would be. Another thing I really loved about this movie is like how 
unembarrassed it was by how objectively weird Mario is as a concept, right? They've shown this in a trailer. Some of the weirder costumes, like Cat Mario, like make an appearance in this movie and they just work the way they work. Like Mario is doing, he's behaving like a cat and doing the like dive bomb thing. The things just function the way they do in the Mario universe. I feel like I sound like a very like, mm, technically it should work like this guy. But like the way that like rings in the Sonic movie are just fucking like actual, the rings he picks up are used as like huge teleportation, like portal rings always ticked me off. I know it's like maybe arguably like the end of a level bonus stage ring or something, but it was just such a like flimsy connection of like the rings didn't look or operate or even sound for the most part like they do in Sonic. You, you never once have that problem in this. There's like jokes in this movie that have to do with the colors of mushrooms where like if you're paying attention, you're a Mario fan, you you figure out what's about to happen in a scene 15 seconds before the rest of the room does if they don't know that much about Mario stuff. And that to me is an awesome feeling. Like it legitimately sincerely feels like it was made for fans of this thing. That's not to say that it's perfect. There's things about it that I, I didn't like. I think the first and foremost, like the eighties needle drops are like universally bad and tacky. I get the connection, I guess, is it's like Mario's from the eighties and, and that's like a shortcut to making parents not bored in a children's movie or something, I guess. I just thought that they were like so obvious and tacky and the rest of the soundtrack was so good that every time they like pivoted to like a eighties needle drop, I was like, this is beneath you. Mario movie. Um, but the, the rest of the soundtrack is really impressive. There's a <laughs> there's a Captain Toad needle drop in this movie. Like I was I could not I was looking around like is anyone else in the room even clocking that there's a Captain Toad reference happening because it just it, it boggled my mind. And yes, does the last third of this movie kind of devolve into a Marvel movie? Yes. Is the girl bossification of Peach a little like annoying and self-conscious and feels like a symptom of the involvement of a like California based animation studio in the production of this movie. Yeah, probably. I don't think that's what, <laughs> I don't think Nintendo came up with that, but like these are, these feel like really minor quibbles and it's just the whole movie felt very careful. And like, it felt like a really reined in kind of like conservative approach to turning Mario into a movie, w meaning they didn't, throw it to a screenwriter who barely knew the subject matter. And like, it's sort of, cause they've learned their lesson, I guess, right? Like that, they did that once a few decades ago and it didn't turn out great. It was a very like, let's use the things that make Mario good and the things that make animation good and combine them into a movie. That's pretty much the best way to sum it up, I think. I don't need, I don't have that much more to say other than that. I liked it. I thought it was good. I, I am kind of surprised that I liked it, but I liked it. That's my opinion of the Mario movie. I'm as, I'm as surprised as anyone. They pulled it off. I'm a little, I could if I wanted to get a little nervous about the insane success of this movie and what it's gonna mean for like turning this into a franchise and if there's gonna be any pressure to like make a Nintendo, I don't even wanna say this out loud, knock on wood, a Nintendo cinematic universe because I, this feels like such a, I don't know. I don't wanna see a Zelda movie, man. I don't wanna see, I do kind of want to see an F-Zero movie, actually, now that I'm saying it out loud. But I'm, yeah, sometimes when something like this makes as much money as this movie seems to be about to make, um, it can lead to some bad incentives that may lead to worse things down the road. But I guess what's reassuring is that like, this movie took an eternity because Nintendo was really vigilant and really careful about the movie they were making. And I would hope that would extend to whatever other Nintendo movie endeavors happen in the future. Yeah, they, they made a good Mario movie. That's insane. When they first announced that this was even happening, I was so skeptical. I was like, this is gonna be an absolute mess, but I need to go look at this mess. I'm excited for this to come out and I'll be able to like laugh at it eventually. That's not what happened. They, they just made something that was like good and entertaining. And it felt like the people who, in, who are most poised to enjoy this are the biggest Nintendo weirdos on the planet, myself included, which is, I think, pretty high praise coming from me. So yeah, that's the Mario movie. Sorry, I just realized I forgot something in the video. I never talked about the voices, which feels crazy because it's such a big part of people's anticipation for and skepticism of this movie. Um, 
Chris Pratt for me was weird for the first five minutes, but I really quickly stopped thinking about it. And I can't tell if that's because I got used to it or it was toned down compared to the initial trailers or if I just stopped thinking of him as Mario and just started thinking of him as a guy, <laughs> a guy wearing a Mario costume. I don't know what the reason was, but it was undistracting for me. And then everyone else was whatever. Everyone else was fine. Uh, that's it. That's what I thought about the Mario voices. If you want to hear me talk about movies more, I have a letterboxed page. <laughs> I don't know if there's any appetite for that, but here's a link to that. I've never really like talked about it on here. Yeah, Mario movie. Oh, also, I'll, also, I, I just, I have a lot of Japan videos coming, I promise. You might have sniffed that out from the beginning of this video. Some stuff in there I'm really excited about, so look forward to that. But yeah, I felt like I had to talk about this movie. What well, with it being opening weekend and all that, um, Mario movie. Mario movie good. Mario movie good. That's crazy. Uh, yep. Yeah.